I'm starting now to get the first uh, YouTube videos up, uh, up uploaded in uh, compressed high definition and I'm very happy with the results. Uh, I think the board, I think you'll all agree, the board is much clearer. So uh, hopefully this site as a result will become more popular. Right? So um, very happy about that. Okay. In this session, I will do a third example of STI, S-T-I-E, uh, Schrodinger Time Independent Equation. Now in this case, it's, it's similar to the first one, this is the third one. Uh, the one big difference is that uh, in this region, in a one-dimensional case, you know, along your x-axis, so in the region uh, above for x uh, uh, greater than a and for x less than minus a, uh, the potential here is not infinite, it's finite. In fact, uh, the potential here um, takes value V0, uh, which is not infinite, it's finite. Right? Now that changes things quite a bit. In fact, uh, the mathematics, you know, <laughs> I'll, you know, jumping ahead a bit, uh, I'll ask you to do quite a bit of homework for yourself uh, to, uh, you know, to, to get these results here that I'm essentially just throwing at you. But, uh, <coughs> right, so, uh, so, so now in this region, uh, your u will not be zero, right? Well, it will as you could go out, but uh, effectively, um, there are values, non-zero values of your u, your, your wave function, your spatially dependent wave function, depending on x, in this region. It will not be zero, okay? And so now, now in a sense, we will have, now there's a symmetry. Um, the, uh, the potential is uh, mirror symmetric, right? It's, uh, it's zero in this region, as usual, right? Uh, you know, the potential is zero in, in this strip of the x-axis. And uh, finite, v naught, uh, in these two strips, half strips, right? So, uh, so we take the STI, now uh, in the area here when V is naught, uh, your STI, the Schrodinger time independent equation, your STI uh, becomes this. We've seen this uh, several times before, okay, so, so that's nothing new. Now what is new is in these uh, regions, uh, above when X is greater than A and X is less than minus A. Then uh, you use your STI with uh, a finite value for for the potential, you know, it's uh, v naught. So you plug you plug that in, right? So now now we have uh, two equations. So things are more complicated. We have we have to solve uh, these two equations, and uh, we're trying to well as usual you know, the same recipe. Uh, we try to find values for the e and uh, and the u, the the wave functions, right? So it's you know, it boils down as usual to solving differential equations. Okay. Now uh, let's simplify things a bit. Uh, we'll bring in some uh, new variables, alpha and beta. And def just def you know, why do you do that? Well, it makes things more convenient. Uh, you get you know, instead of having an equation, the equations like this, which are a bit long-winded and tedious, uh, you can simplify the equations down to uh, th these kinds of forms. And so uh, it's worthwhile making making these substitutions, you know, redefining your variables, right? So let alpha, by definition, I could I could put three bars there. Could, oops, three bars. By definition, okay. So define these uh, two variables, alpha to be this. So square root of two m e over h bar squared, and e is what we're trying to find. You know, we're trying to find the discrete uh, allowed that is the energy for this system and, and define beta to be something similar except you've got a term here uh, v naught minus e okay and the rest is much the same okay now um, we're going to spit up the problem now your e uh, let's assume that it's actually less than v naught so your energy in this in this region between a and minus a, 
uh, that energy E, whatever it is, let it be less than V naught. Now later, like it's not even on this board, but uh, like next session, uh, we will consider the, the second case when your energy, your E, your E here, is greater than V naught. Right? But that's a whole separate case and uh, different analysis, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, next next session. Because you know, <laughs> as usual, I've run out of board. I'm uh, I'm seriously debating whether I should buy a, a bigger board. You know, just have a big board, because already, and this is only undergrad level. Um, the number of equations I'm putting on the board is growing and growing, so uh, it will need more and more sessions. Anyway, okay, so uh, we'll just do the first of two major cases. The first case is when the energy is less, less than the potential value here, okay, less than. And next session we'll cover greater than. All right, so these, but now using these uh, two variables, now they vary because you know, they depend on E, and E is a variable. E can change. They're not constants, right? V, V naught's constant. M, you know, the mass of particle, I assume that's constant. H bar's, H bar's constant. But e, is, e can change, so, so E is a variable, therefore beta is a variable. E can change, therefore alpha is a variable. Okay? So we have, we have uh, yeah, alpha and beta depend on the value of E. Okay? So that means uh, you can rewrite this equation as just uh, du dx squared is minus alpha squared u. Right? Sort of easier, much easier. And the second equation here uh, just becomes uh, du squared dx squared is plus beta squared u, right? So uh, these two equations have simplified right down, All right? Now uh, we've seen we've seen this before. Uh, u takes the form of a sine plus b cos, you know, that that kind of thing. So nothing new there, right? So uh, you know, won't talk about that much. But this this one, uh, equation two. Um, where you've got a plus something squared, so beta squared, that is new, right? So we need we need to solve this one. So we'll concentrate on uh, equation two for the moment. So du squared dx squared equals beta squared u, right? So what what general form uh, for the solution you know, u, your wave function u? What what will you have? Uh, all right. Now we're Equation two is in the region outside these uh, barriers, if you like, well, quasi-barriers. Um, so in this region of x greater than a, and in this region of x less than minus a. All right. So uh, now, I assume you've done some courses or you've taught yourself how to solve differential equations. So uh, you here will take the following general form. Okay. Now, if you differentiate u twice you get minus beta squared times this, and again plus beta squared. So that's the general solution for that's 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 your u, u the general solution to this this type of equation, right? Now uh, we can we can save ourselves a lot of work. You remember uh, around this region here of the previous session, uh, we did a theorem effectively, and we proved. Uh, see if I can get it from memory. Uh, we proved that um, if your uh, potential, if your, if your potential V is symmetric, now it, it, in this case it is, right, because uh, the V here is zero in that region and it's V naught in these two regions, so there's a, a kind of mirror symmetry in the potential, potential value. So, so we do have, um, for, for this case, we do have the potential being symmetric, so it has an even, even parity, if you like. Uh, the wave function uh, is also assumed to be non-degenerate. Uh, let's assume that that's the case for this for this uh, third case of STI. Let's assume that uh, the wave function uh, is non-degenerate, and under those circumstances. Oh, and it's a stationary state. Now that means that the potential does not vary with time, which is true here. You know, uh, there's no mention of time uh, for the potential, just fixed, right? invariable in time. Okay, so uh, uh, under those circumstances, then your uh, 
your stationary state, your, your, your wave function, your U, is, uh, has odd or even parity. That was, that was the theorem. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, so, we know, so we know that U has odd or even parity. So that means we can, we can uh, save ourselves a lot of work by just solving one half of the problem. And once we've solved that, we know by, you know, by mirror symmetry, uh, we'll get the solution to the other half of the problem. So, so, for example, if we can solve what's going on on, on this right, the right half of the problem, then by uh, you know, symmetry, odd, odd or even parity, we, we can uh, figure out uh, what the wave function should be on the, on the left half. Okay? So we can save, save ourselves a lot of work, which is nice. So, uh, you know, theorems, theorems like the odd or even parity are very useful. Yeah? So, okay. So, uh, so you you will have odd or even parity. Yeah, it will be uh, u of minus x will equal either u of x or u of minus x will equal minus u of x. Right. So we'll have odd or even parity. Right. So uh, yeah, we we can figure out what's happening to the to the left half once we know what's happening in the right half. Uh, it'll either be a mirror image be the same, or it'll, uh, whatever it is here, it'll become sort of minus on the left side. 